WCWP is supported by our listeners and Melissa and Harry Liss, the Manzadina Foundation, the School of Visual and Performing Arts at LIU Post. To join our family of supporters, go to WCWP.org and click on the support tab. WCWP is supported by Zabar's of New York. For over 70 years, Zabar's has featured its own roasted ground coffee, imported teas, bagels, gifts, and housewares from its Manhattan location, 2245 Broadway at 80th Street, or their online marketplace. For more, visit Zabars.com or call 212-496-1234. This is WCWP. Brookville, New York. LIE Post Public Radio. Hear us at 88.1 FM and WCWP.org. You're turned on and tuned in to Bobby G. Look at that, man. It's like a radio station. You're grooving with Bobby G on 88.1 FM WCWP. The way you smile, I love how much you care. I love how you go up to Salma alone just sitting there. I love the way you wake up, I love the way you fall asleep. I love how you speak the words that mean so much to me. I love every shade of blue. I love spending my time. I love the way you brush your teeth I love the way you comb your hair I love the way you look back To make sure that I'm still there I love the dimple in your cheeks I love the twinkle in your eyes I love how you take so long To say goodbye I love every shade of blue I love spending my time with you I love every imperfection I love how you want my affection I love the way we first met, I love all that you do I love how we fell in love so fast so soon I love every shade of blue I love loving you I love every imperfection I love how you stole my heart my affection and that's I love and that's Emily Blumenthal and uh, believe it or not I have Emily with us tonight hello sweetheart how are you hello doing good it's good to have you aboard what we like to do on the rock show is to do a variety of things we do stuff that's not on commercial radio we have young upcoming artists we have people who are uh, solo artists that have uh, gone on their own and want to promote their own individual projects and it's very nice to have you up here so how did you get started with uh, doing all this my dear how did you decide you wanted to do this Well, when I was 14 years old, Mm -hmm. I started songwriting in my room late at night, um, and I would spend hours just on my floor, crouched down, writing uh, different things that were, like, just writing out as an outlet growing up. Mm -hmm. So when I was 14, I actually wrote this uh, song you just played. Okay. Um, And this was, you know, inspired by what I was going through at the time. And it was just my first uh, time being with someone um, in a, I guess, in a more relationship-y type Mm -hmm. uh, thing. A more serious uh, than just being, you know, hi, hello, how are you type situation. Yeah, first, first, like, infatuation uh, with someone. So, you know, naturally, I love everything about (laughs) the person. But, yeah, so I I wrote it as a list, and then it turned into this song just with two chords. Very nice. (laughs) And you've been doing this for how long now, my dear? 
I've, well, since I was 14. And that makes and that how many years? That makes <laughs> 14 plus 6. Okay. That is 20. Okay. And that is the age that I am currently. Okay. <laughs> and um, now, when you sit down to write something, how do, do you just have a thought sometimes that you got to get it out? Like sometimes I have an idea f- for a program I want to do, and I think about it, and I start writing down little notes to myself, and then sometimes it doesn't actually come to fruition, but I have enough material that eventually it's going to lead to something. Does it work that way for you? Like when you're songwriting, um, time comes when you're ready to do it. Do you have like something that you bring to the table or you just kind of strum and go somewhere? How does that actually work? Is it going to life experiences? Yeah, usually it's something that happens, um, you know, in my life that I feel, you know, makes me want to write it down mm-hmm. because it had some sort of significance. Mm-hmm. And usually I don't know at the time that I'm going to write a song about it until I'm sitting down and I start jotting down lyrics. And having my guitar next to me, you know, as the message becomes clearer as I'm writing, I kind of see where I want to go melodically mm-hmm. with the song. So, you know, it kind of happens, you know, with both happening at once, with the music happening at the same time as the lyrics. Okay, so it kind of comes together with both. So cause some people, they... They work on the lyric first and then the tune comes around it, or some people do the music first and then the lyric comes around it. But uh, as long as it all works out in the long run, I guess that's the main thing. <laughs> so what do you do in your time now? What, what Are you a student or are you um, working someplace? Um, I am a student at okay. Fordham College Lincoln Fordham, Center. Okay, very nice. <laughs> and uh, do you get a chance to uh, perform and do things um uh, in terms of the campus, that you, do you have an opportunity to do some of that stuff? Do you collaborate with other people, for example? Um, well, I haven't collaborated with anyone from the Lincoln Center campus as of yet. Mm-hmm. Um, but I have um, collaborated with Jim Brickman, who is actually uh, the person who got my music signed to Killer Tracks of Universal Records. Mm-hmm. So I actually collaborated with him on um, the fourth song, um, Okay. We're gonna play. But All right, we can do that. You want to play oh, that now? Uh, sure, we okay. can do that. Here we go. I like to stroll down the street with my cafe latte. You run. It's way. 
not like these games we play I'm so tired of the chase Spinning round our feelings night and day I liked it when your eyes caught mine Twist of fate I can't deny I was taken by And charades, and those are both unreleased. Am I correct, Emily? That is correct. All right. So you're hearing it for the very first time here at 88.1 WCWP and WCWP.org. My guest is Emily Blumenthal. <laughs> and that first song that we opened up with has quite a story that goes with it, apparently. So why don't you share that with our audience? Uh, well, the song for I Love, um, you know, I recorded it when I was 14. And when um, it got into the hands of Universal and... Uh, ended up being released through Jim Brickman's album, Jim Brickman and Friends. Um, It actually got licensed for a commercial in Taiwan. And I was seeing Gone Girl in the movie theater, and suddenly I look at my cell phone, and I'm getting uh, likes, hundreds, by, I'd say, every, like, five minutes uh, from people whose, you know, names I've never seen before. And I think, oh, it's just spam mail. Like, this can't be anything. Um, but then I realized quickly that someone had messaged me and said, hey, I just want to let you know your song I love is you know, on this commercial and it's really blowing up on YouTube. You should check it out. And I looked and I couldn't believe it. It had like 300,000 views just being posted right away. So, that's, a, 
that's a big accomplishment. Thank you. It was so incredible. That's really, really nice. So Thank if you. someone wants to go, how can they punch it in on YouTube? Tell, tell them exactly what to type in. Well, it's, um, I on believe, the search. I believe if you do I Love Emily Blumenthal, mm -hmm. um, it probably should come up. It should? I'll check it, and when we take a break, I'm going to go look. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Bobby G. This is The Rock Show. And tell us about these two other songs now um, that we just played. That, are they going to eventually be released? Uh, yes. Okay. I have to figure out a plan for that. Um, but I will uh, definitely be releasing them within the coming year. Okay. And Where I Want to Be was a song that I co-wrote with um, Jim Brickman and David Craig. And we were sitting in one of the songwriting rooms in Universal, uh, which, which is surprisingly like two blocks away from where I live on my college campus. Mm -hmm. So I was able to just get there and you know start writing with them and... It was incredible being in such a collaborative setting where, you know, you have this grand piano, you have all the guitars to choose from. There's so many sounds accessible that you're just able to work with, you know, these such talented individuals and be able to come up with something. How did you meet up with them? Um, well, Jim Brickman, um, when I was 14, my I was just playing my guitar in my friend's room and her mom walked by and said, oh, I really like this, and I'd love to send this to Jim Brickman, who's someone that I had worked with when I was in music. So um, basically she sent over I love to her, I mean to him, <laughs> when I was uh, 14, and then the next year he contacts me, says I love the song, let's you know talk about getting it released on my album, and then sure enough, a few years later, this one and the song Under My Wings end up on his album and end up being licensed for commercials. It's really so wonderful. You need to exploit the market overseas, you know, <laughs> before we walk out of here tonight, even off the air. We need that's that's the plan because this is this is a door that's open for you and you're you're a youngster <laughs> and uh, this is a great opportunity to uh, to make a move now, you know. Um, so we, we want to promote your work and uh, I know that you wanted to originally sing tonight live in the studio. Yes, but you you have a little uh, little mouse in your throat or yeah. something. Little, it's it's you know it's a coming laryngitis. out. Laryngitis. Yeah, yeah. It's, com it's coming out pretty nasty. I, I tried singing before, and mm -hmm. you know I'm I'm doing uh, you a favor <laughs> <laughs> by by not singing now. But um, you know it'll it'll hopefully get better within the coming days. All right. Well, we'll, teas. we'll we'll set up something for the spring because <laughs> the weather in in the uh, you know. The middle of the winter is always a, a problem, so we'll we'll set up something for the spring, and maybe your album, you know, or your LP, if you put it out as such, or EP, whatever, uh, will be released by then. All right, let's do a little bit of business, and then we'll play some more of your music. How's that sound? Sounds great. Okay, we'll do that. We'll be back right after this. This is the Rock Show on eighty-eight point one FM WCWP.org. Need your metal fix? Journey into the void with Dave Leitner Wednesday nights at nine for the music you won't hear anywhere else on the air. Does that mean it's louder? Is it any louder? Well, it's one louder, isn't it? Two hours of heavy metal in its purest form from Black Sabbath and beyond. Not the same old classic rock. Not the same played out songs. These go to 11. Into the Void, Wednesdays at 9 p.m. Only on 88.1 FM and WCWP.org. To err is human, but to really foul things up, you need technology. Follow these easy directions for tech help. Bring your smartphone, tablet, or any other device to the reference desk at the Port Washington Public Library on Wednesdays from 2 to 4 p.m. and go away happy. For more info, call 516-883-4400 or visit pwpl.org. The Community Calendar is a public service from your friends at 88.1 FM and wcwp.org. To err is human, but to really foul things up, you need technology. Follow these easy directions for tech help. Bring your smartphone, tablet, or any other device to the reference desk at the Port Washington Public Library on Wednesdays from 2 to 4 p.m. and go away happy. For more info, call 516-883-4400 or visit pwpl.org. The Community Calendar is a public service from your friends at 88.1 FM and wcwp.org.
Is this your idea of great rock for adults? We didn't think so. Get outstanding rock right here on WCWP. Girl, you really got me going. You got me so I don't know what I'm doing. Give me some of those. Get the best of new and not so new rock for adults from noon till 7 on 88.1 FM and WCWP.org. Hey everybody, this is Mark Dawson from the Grassroots, and you are listening to my friend Bobby G right here on The Rock Show. Oh, I lost control when your love, when your love took hold. When your love, when your love took hold of me, I'm lost. You see, been lost since the day you met me. Lost since you and I became we. We would try. I really like that one. That sounds like a hit to me. Thank you. So <laughs> Number much. two in Taiwan, it was right. <laughs> um, I love was, but I love. You know, if hopefully if this we one, we got to make this one a bigger hit. <laughs> that'll be that would be great. <laughs> <laughs> I don't manipulate the charts that easily, unfortunately. <laughs> so that's that's a, an incredible accomplishment for someone who's twenty years old Thank to be you. in the top three or top two or you know whatever in any country anywhere. That's a serious accomplishment. You should be very proud of yourself. 
All right. <laughs> but um, yeah, with this uh, this past one, I actually thought it was a like throwaway song. Mm-hmm. I didn't really acknowledge it much mm-hmm. until I went to my friend Jack Hoffman, who is um, you know went to my high school, and he's at Berkeley now, and he's doing um, music production, and you know he showed me that. You know, you can add like different levels. Like he he suggested they have like group people singing for the last parts and adding drum beats. And you know, the song really like came to something that it's I very very felt catchy. Like Thank my you. my colleague is here, Mike Riccio from the Rock Show, and he knows <laughs> um, a lot about music. And and it's a very very catchy tune. Thank and we've you. been doing this a very very long time. Uh, you know, when we started, we were diapers, I believe. But this is Between the station. <laughs> the station's been on the air fifty years, and Mike and I came in the year. Well, I came a little bit before Mike, but I didn't get involved with the station until the about hook. the same time as Mike. The you hook, can you can step in. That, uh, it's got a great hook, and that's what makes a hit. Yeah, because if you get have a good a good hook and something that's catchy, that's what's going to make the uh, make the hook into a, a hit. Thank that's you. how you make a hook into a hit, Bob. Uh, that's it. Do and I get paid for that little gem? I, no? I hope so. Yeah. But Mike said he would have brought some some jingles to play right. along with this uh, if he would have known in advance that uh, that it was such a big hit. Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but Emily, on um, on I love you don't mind if I ask no, a question, no, please, you, Bob. That, I'm glad <laughs> I mean, that you're here. I'm being paid. Uh, for you're getting big bucks no, for this. <laughs> zero dollars and a bit round <laughs> figures, like I would say, zero dollars an hour. <laughs> what would you say uh, caused uh, uh, I Love to become such a big hit in Taiwan? Was it a YouTube exposure? or, or what was? How did that happen exactly? I think it was just, you know, through, I think, the YouTube video, but also um, just with the radio play uh-huh. for this song. Um, apparently, I had a friend who was uh, studying abroad in that time, and, um, you know, my name casually came up, and she said, Emily Blumenthal, like, yeah, she's, being on, she's been played on the radio, the song I love. It was crazy. I recorded it when I was 14 in my chorus teacher's basement. You know, I never thought that that recording would go to Viral. Taiwan. Yeah. yeah. On the last crazy. one that we played, we you said that there was you had an idea to to like have a uh, uh, a multiple there was a multiple track, and did you actually have other uh, other singers in the studio with you? Um, n- well, yeah, I'd say um, other singers. Uh, we did really. It was just the celloist. You know, anyone can really be a singer, I mm-hmm. think. Uh, so, you know, we had him, you know, singing on it with me. And, you know, we were doing all sorts of voices, like, and you know, putting the tracks over each other. So it sounded like a lot of people. We had about four. Um, it was me. It was Jack was doing the production of it and his girlfriend, Julia. And we were all just, you know, having fun with it. And, you know, made for such an awesome collaborative experience. It is a really catchy tune, though. Yeah, Mike. It, it, it sounded really good. Is. Were any of the overdubs your own on there? Where you you, uh, you might harmonize with yourself? Have you ever done any of that, or, or think you might be doing some of that? Uh, I think there is some, actually, in my song um, "Under My Wings," where mm-hmm. I um, I actually, when I wrote it, it was very bare and stripped down. I had only. I think it was one chord, really, for the entire song. Wow. And um, this producer, David Grow, came to the song and said, you know, you have a lot of space in this, and it can allow you to, you know, do some vocal just tones lower to kind of, like, make for a bass sound. And, you know, once once he showed me that, it really filled the, the song, and it turned into something that I never thought that it could. Yeah. You know, Bob, I'm thinking uh, the Stones had a big song with Under My Thumb. Mm -hmm. So I think some 50 years later, we're due for another under hit, Under My Thumb. We need something called Under My Wings. I think that would be a, you know. Why don't we play that now? I mean, uh, I think we should listen to it. All right, well, let's do that. It's naturally full here. This is freeform radio right now tonight. And Mike does (laughs) maybe just the opposite, but it doesn't matter. We're we're here. We're the rock show. We have freedom here. And that's what makes us uh, what we are. Okay, let's have a listen. Let's try that again. I'll see what I can do. I can tap dance while you wait. Oh, I got it, I got it, I got it. Budding flower In the midst of November Is like snow Falling through the skies of spring Floating 
Under My Wings, and that's Emily Blumenthal. Tell us about that again, Emily. They filled the little gaps. How did they do that? So um, They took a little glue and, uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, originally he heard it and he said, you know, this has a lot of space. And I think that, you know, the message of the song really has this elevated feeling to it. I want to feel like, you know, I'm flying while I'm, you know, listening to this song. I want to have those sounds of the city underneath. And I want to have those little, like, twinges. And I think that that's, um, you know, the way that he, he used words like twinges and sweeteners. And, mm-hmm. like, it was just very light ways of making a song just have so much more power. And I, you know, I never had really seen that before, how, like, little nuances can make such a big difference. Having a good producer is is key, and and that can make or break somebody who's got a lot of talent if it's not produced well. And I'll I'll use something that's totally off the wall here, Mike. Um, Jimi Hendrix had a Mickey Mouse production of All Along the Watchtower, went absolutely nowhere. And then the version that was the hit version was produced completely differently and was very, very successful. So having a good producer or different mix and stuff like that can be really critical. Or just the right combination because Mickey Most yeah. with Jimi Hendrix didn't right. cut didn't it. Didn't work, but, but Mickey, Mickey Most, Most had about, what, 10 or 12 gazillion hits. <laughs> top 10 hits yeah. with Termin Termits. Yeah. So it really does. It really comes down to the combination. Combination. And, and, and everything that, that's going on with it, too. So, uh, oh, we're doing pantomime over there. Mm. <laughs> Emily, quick question for you. Um, two things. How long of a time span from the first song, I mean, 14 years old for I Love, but the other songs on here, were they all done in a relatively short time span, or were they also done from when you were 15 and 16 and that type of thing? Um, well, the, the Under My Wings one happened when I was, 
I believe, 16. I was in my basement, and I was looking at ground level out my window, and, you know, I could see, um, like, the grass. And, you know, I was at this, like, very low level looking up, and I wondered what it would be like to have the opposite perspective. So that's kind of where that song came from. And it was more a poem. Um, and then I guess the song just kind of came as I was writing it down as a poem. But yeah, it was, it was a interesting process. I've never really had that process before for songwriting. And how, how, how would you say how, how long it takes you to write an individual song in, in general? Is it a couple of days, a couple of hours? How, um, how would it work for you? I would say that it takes probably an hour um, to two hours, and then I go back and you know I I look at more specific things and I show other people and I ask them what they think or what sounds like you know different to them and then I you know I kind of make it so that way everyone can kind of connect to it because I think that's the most important part of music is writing down something that other people can connect to the same way that the writer did. That's very important. Yeah, and you get those little nuances, too, when you get other people's input. Okay. Mm -hmm. We'll be right back after we take care of a little bit of message here, okay? Be right back. First, there was To Kill a Mockingbird. Then, there was Ghost Set a Watchman. Or is it the other way around? Sit down with Kathy Flynn and discuss what author Harper Lee has left for us to unravel. It's on Tuesday, November 17th at 2 p.m. in the Glen Cove Public Library. For more info, call 516-676-2130 or visit glencovelibrary.org. The community calendar is a public service from your friends at 88.1 FM and wcwp.org. Why isn't Glen Cove still called Mosquito Cove? Get the answer to this and more historical facts about this Gold Coast city. The History Room is open Mondays from 2 to 5 p.m. and Thursdays from 9 a.m. to noon in the Glen Cove Public Library. Listen to interviews, read transcripts, and learn more about Glen Cove. For more info, call 516-676-2130 or visit glencovelibrary.org. The Community Calendar is a public service from your friends at 88.1 FM and wcwp.org. Alana here, inviting you to check out the Rockin' Sunday Morning Show every Sunday morning from 10 a.m. till noon. You'll hear two great hours of classics from the 1960s, 70s, and 80s. I've got Whitney Houston, Night Ranger, and everything in between. There's even a Beatles block. The Rockin' Sunday Morning Show. Sunday mornings from 10 a.m. till noon, only on 88.1 FM and WCWP.org. When I'm with you, I'll dance in the rain Smile till it hurts, go crazy insane When I'm with you, I'll play in the snow Shout I love you off rooftops Cause I don't care who knows Cause I don't care who knows I know that it's hard To find the one you Without warning, I fell with 
without warning you came up from behind and surprised me backwards i thought i was falling backwards when really it was forwards for me when you're near i become afraid but when you're away i want you here to stay I'm Bobby G. This is 88.1 FM, WCWP, and I'm joined with Mike Riccio, also from The Rock Show. And we have Emily Blumenthal in the studio with us, and we want to follow up on that last question, Mike. Yes, exactly. We sort of had some music jump in there. Well, Emily, unfortunately, but... we have to keep the station manager happy and play his jingles and his That's commercials right. and pay well, the bills. We're talking about time frame, and yeah. you, you, the first one you wrote at 14, and mm-hmm. some of these you wrote, I would think, fairly recently, right? Uh, yes, yeah, so 15, uh, 16, 17 was a lot of the songs that were, where they have a more, um, I guess, you know, me being infatuated, it's more extreme words that I'm using, and, you know, I guess that kind of reflects the age. Um, and, you know, as I was getting older, the song that we played, We, uh, that was a love story, and that one I wrote um, more when I was like 18 and the most recent one was Where I Want to Be uh, which was when I was nine I think I was uh, 19 at that time so it's you know it kind of goes in order I can see like kind of a diary of my life through my songs which is interesting Um, just going through and listening now I can see it more and more. And I would guess that you have a little bit of a backlog of a catalog ready to go, right? You keep writing songs, and you have quite a few that uh, that, that are ready for uh, the next time around, right? Yeah. So, no, all right, now we're going to ask a question that you have to promise to answer. The first one is yes or no, because a lot of acts <laughs> refuse to, to, to answer Uh-oh. this question accurately. Watch out now. Okay. On this CD, have we played yet your own personal favorite from this CD? Just yes or no. Have we played it yet? No. Okay. And the next question, which a lot of acts never want to, to, to let us know, is what is your favorite? On this CD, what's your personal favorite that you enjoy the most, writing, singing, that you think came out the best? I believe that my favorite would probably have to be Kiss Me, uh, uh. which was a song that I wrote. Actually, I was contacted, and someone said, we need a song that you know has the word kiss in it. And I said, oh, I've got that one. But... <laughs> I did not have that at all. So then I quickly ran back to my room and was like jotting down things. And, you know, I showed I showed him um, my first draft. And he said, OK, like, I like this, but maybe you could tweak it in these ways. And, 
you know, I ended up with Kiss Me, and, um, you know, it ended up playing at a, I believe it was a baseball stadium in Nashville uh, for the Kiss Me Cam. (laughs) So that was exciting. Oh, see? So we would be remiss in not playing this. I think we should get it in because we've got uh, Danny Kalb who's going to come by at uh, 8 o'clock, member of the Blues Project. He's going to do an hour of acoustic stuff. So let's play this because we do not want to miss out, right? That's our rule here. Okay, here we go. We have to play the favorite of the artist, Michael. Yeah, but first we have to say, where are we? What well, we're at WCWP 88.1 FM. I'm and Bobby G, and this is good old Mike Riccio. Right, and we are also WCWP dot org. And we are here tonight with Emily Blumenthal. Right, and the name of the CD is? I Give Up. What is the name of the CD, Emily? It's not, I Give Up. No, it's not no. out. It's not out yet as a CD <laughs> officially yet. Be, but the working be, title love. is? The working title is I Love. I Love. All right. Which was the single, of course, in mm-hmm. Taiwan. <laughs> That, Which uh, reached number two, if you were paying attention at any right. point I during the show tonight. I, I got my super hit two jingle ready to go okay. next time we do Bring this. Bring it. Uh, play. We're going to talk about covers with her. <laughs> yeah, I, I was curious, Emily, about the uh, cover versions. Now, you mentioned you do some covers just uh, for yourself or when you're performing, or do you plan to put any of those on CDs? Or, uh, um, what? Well, I did record um, more professionally a cover of Some Nights uh, by Fun. And that was um, that was a great experience with taking apart a song and trying to make it sound um, original or from a different perspective. Um, and you know, I'm hoping that my version did it justice. But I did that one, and I also do covers of like older songs. With um, I play Melanie a lot at gigs, and I play um, Me and Bobby McGee. Nice. What do you play by Melanie? Um, I play the 
Lay Down, uh, Lay Down brand Candles new in the king. Rain. Brand New King, okay. Oh, brand New King. I was going to guess Ooh, Brand New King. I'd love to hear that. Yeah, I'd, I'd love, you know what I'd love to hear? I'd love to hear you do a medley of Sixpence, None the Richer, Kiss Me with your Kiss Me. That would be a great medley. So you got to promise, even if it comes in on a uh, on a bootleg CD, I want to hear that sooner or later. With well, you. <laughs> uh, we want to extend once again uh, an invitation for Emily to come back up when she's in better voice. She's got a little remnants of laryngitis, mm-hmm. and we've been on the air when we you, you know want me to sing. I will, Bob. No. Well, no. <laughs> I, I I'll let you have the studio to yourself that evening. <laughs> <laughs> or you could sing with me when I come. A oh, duet? Spring. Oh, that'll be oh, yeah. that'll be priceless. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a math guy. They might charge people to not have to listen. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. No, Mike, Mike's an announcer type. He's, he's you know he'll introduce you. That's the right. best thing. Yeah. That's what you want. That's right. So both versions of "Kiss Me" next time you're in the studio, right? You got it. Promise. All right. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. All right. So we have um, oh maybe about three four minutes before I have to get into all these gazillion announcements because I'm not going to be playing any gazillion <laughs> announcements in the next hour at all. Uh, Mike's laughing as I have them all lined up. But uh, uh, tell people how to get access to your music before we uh, play the the last tune, uh, which is appropriate, which is going to be called Closing Time. But mm-hmm. tell us how we can access your music. Uh, we can go to where? Uh, on Facebook. Facebook. I have a music page. It's facebook.com slash E-M-B-L-U. Mm-hmm. And I write about upcoming gigs that I have, uh, new releases that are coming out. Do you have any you want to plug right now? Because we do that. Uh, new releases that are well, coming Well, if you're going to be appearing somewhere and you want to let us know, or we can add it to the concert calendar when we put that out. We do that. Mike or knows. Both. Or both. Yeah. <laughs> we have a WCWP Rock Show blog, and uh, Bernie Bernard, who's one of the Rock Show regulars, she's here on Thursday nights. We alternate back and forth. We'll put out the information. So uh, before you go, we're going to take down your information. We'll do that. But do you have something Wonderful. like in the near future that's coming up that you want to plug? Um, not that I not not know right of on the, on right the agenda. Now, okay. But very very soon. Very soon. And I will let you know. Okay. Very good. <laughs> so we have uh, Mike. You're my witness. We have a tentative Ooh. spring date. Spring date. We have all these basketball games that's that right. that interrupt our exciting programming. But you know the the, the college students want to hear their team and root for their team, and that's only fair. And uh, Mike has been banned from the OAs for a very long time because <laughs> of basketball. I'm preempted for basketball, but for the that's next the way it goes, months. you know. That's good. I got a vacation. All right. So um, it was a real pleasure to have you up here. Hope you had a good time. Yeah, that was great. And uh, Thank we'll you have for you back. Me. We'll have you back. Any parting words, sweetheart, before we uh, play the last tune for you? Um, well, the next time that I will be performing will probably be at Hudson Social, which okay. is a place that is right off of the Dobbs Ferry stop train station on the Croton Harmon line. So that's uh, you know, easy to get to and it's a it's a great time uh, playing there. I play a lot of that Melanie stuff and Sixpence None the Richer. So right. Okay. It'll Sounds be a good. good. Time. Sounds like a plan. All right. <laughs> thank you so much for coming by. This is Bobby G. This is the Rock Show. Danny Cal will be coming up at the eight o'clock hour. In the meantime, we gotta take care of some business before we do that. However, one more tune from Emily. After nine, you didn't call I was waiting by the phone while you were sitting at home It was my first time, you didn't know And the soft heart you showed turned to stone And I'm here while you're away And even in the moment I thought that you were worth fighting for But you hurt me like you hurt all others Before did you win? Did I lose? Was I just a toy you thought?